Hello, this is another in our series of discussions about different types of magnetic separator that are used in the minerals and ceramic industries specifically. Today we're going to talk about the uh, master roll separator, which is a permanent magnetic roll separator. And it's a sort of brother of the induced roll, which we have talked about before. The difference, the key difference with this machine is that it is a permanent magnetic roll separator. And with that come some advantages for certain applications. Specifically, it means that the size range of the material it can process is much larger. Here we can operate from maybe five or six millimeters down to about a hundred microns in size. So it's a very flexible uh, magnetic separator for specific applications. Let's first look at maybe start at the left hand side and move to the right. Here we have a vibratory feeder uh, which ensures that, that we have a, a, a mono layer of material that falls onto the uh, belt, the feed belt for the unit here and we have our permanent uh, magnetic roll which is the front pulley of the unit. It's this particular uh, roll uh, that is of particular sort of technical interest it's made up of couplings of uh, neodymium, boron, iron, rare earth magnetic uh, disks that are placed po uh, north pole to north pole and south pole to south pole along the width of the belt here. The effect that that has is that it, by putting a pole piece in between, an iron pole piece in between, it means that we get a very high field strength and also a very high field gradient on the belt surface itself. Now, if you, if you look at this little, uh, unit here you'll see that um, if you can hone in on this you'll see that here the the dark area in this is the magnetic material and the green area showing on the on this is the pole piece so we normally run at about a six to one ratio between pole piece and uh, iron disc then pole piece again so it is north pole north pole pushed together with the iron in the middle of that what the effect that has, it pushes the magnetic field out onto the surface of the roll and allows us to capture paramagnetic particles as it passes over the roll. I must stress that these units are completely uh, flexible design and if we have a coarser particles then we can use thicker pole pieces and thicker magnets to kick the, the magnetic field out further on the roll. So the concept is we design the unit to capture the center of gravity of our paramagnetic particles that are passing over the roll. In this particular application we're going to talk about today, we have a relatively fine silica sand that we're processing in the particle size range, probably 500 microns down to about 45 microns. So this particular unit we're using is a, a, a magnet with a, a pole for configuration for very fine particles. It has its, the majority of its field strength and field gradient very close to the surface of the roll and the, uh, the feed belt. So our main control variables on this unit are the belt speed that we're feeding the, the, the machine at and the splitter plate position. It is a permanent uh, magnetic roll that is that will give us in the region of 10 to 12,000 gauss on the surface and a very very high field gradient and as we discussed before it's always the combination of field strength and field gradient that gives us a separation performance. We're now running the roll we're feeding a mono layer of material onto, onto the uh, roll. This is a mixture of silica sand uh, and contains some black mineral contamination that you can see as it's feeding over. The majority of that contamination is biotype mica which contains a, a, a degree of iron in it and it's paramagnetic and it also contains some ilmenite and other iron oxides which are also paramagnetic. The silica sand itself is diamagnetic and is thrown up by its own centrifugal force from the roll and if you look around at the bottom here you'll see that there are splitter plates in position that allows the collection of the magnetic fraction and the middling's fraction to be with as well. These units operate at various belt widths. We operate up to a, a one meter wide belt width for most applications. That will do two or three tons per hour of this size range material and density material uh, over it. We also offer the option of two different diameters, a 200 millimeter diameter and a 100 millimeter diameter front roll. This is a 200 millimeter diameter version of the, of the unit. 
You can also have one or two pass units where they cascade the magnetics and the non or the non-magnetics onto a second roll below it, so you can get two passes if you have a particularly difficult application that you want to process. So if, if a customer has a specific material like this that they want to run at five tons per hour, what happens in, in practice is that we will run laboratory tests on it and simulate a, a, a flow rate equivalent to maybe two tons per hour in a meter wide unit. We will then take samples, representative samples of the material. We will then analyze it via XRF and that will give us a, a, an idea of the uh, removal of contamination and whether it's within the specification that the customer is required. Okay, so here we're looking at the samples pre and post uh, processing over the master roll unit. We have the feed material here, which I said is silica sand with uh, some different micas in it, uh, biotite mica, there's some muscovite mica that's shining at you uh, under the lights as well. There'll be some ilmenite in there, which is iron titanate and some other iron oxides like hematite here. And hopefully you can see that it's speckled with these different minerals. The iron content of this is about 0.6% Fe uh, chemically with, within it. It's pretty clean, but it's not clean enough for this particular application. So we pass it over the, the, the uh, master roll unit and we get two fractions coming out in this case. We get a non-magnetic fraction and a magnetic fraction here. It's probably easiest to concentrate on the magnetics and here you can see a concentration of the darker minerals, the biotite mica, the ilmenite have been pulled off. There's a little carryover of fine material, but all in all, that's a pretty good concentrate of uh, magnetic materials. The non-magnetics look whiter there's less, um, there is less dark specks within there. And via XRF analysis, the iron content has dropped down to about 0.05% Fe, which was in the customer specification. So a successful test trial on, uh, on, a, on a material with very little carryover of good, uh, of good products. So the losses for the customer are quite small.